Hello, hello everybody. This is Monty with Flowers by the Bunch. Today we are going to work on a sympathy arrangement using a grapevine wreath. So I don't do these as often as I wish I did. They really make a beautiful display. I'm starting out with an 18 inch grapevine wreath and I am going to, I'm placing it on a metal stand. Um, I believe this is a 54 inch metal stand. I'm going to show you really quickly how I attach the grapevine wreath to the stand. Now, if you do not um, have, if you don't have a flower shop and you need a stand, often you can go to a craft store and they will carry the um, metal stands. Um, if you need a stand and the craft store doesn't have it, go to your local funeral home and see if they might have one available. Sometimes they do have those available or you could certainly go to a flower shop. Here at our flower shop, we're happy to sell you a stand if you just need a stand. So I'm taking this zip tie. These are just, um, I think they're eight inch zip ties I picked up from Lowe's. Um, I always get a thousand zip ties because we use a lot of them, um, but they have them in smaller quantities. So I'm just taking this zip tie and I'm running it through that grapevine wreath. And then I am just zip tying it in place onto this stand. Now this is just going to make sure that this piece does not come off the stand. It's always important that you have really good um, mechanics so that your arrangements will stay together. The nice part about these zip ties is all you need is a good pair of scissors and you can snip this arrangement right off this stand if you wanted to. So I'll come a little closer so I zip tied it in three different places. One, two, and then right up there where it's hooked, three. I'm going to take some scissors and I'm going to cut those tabs off or some, these are wire snips, they work better. So I'm just cutting those long tabs off. Be sure if you use zip ties that you cut these tabs. It just cleans it up. It just looks so much better. So go ahead and cut those tabs off. Toss those. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add fresh floral foam. Now, if you're going to use faux flowers, you can use regular styrofoam, just in the same way I'm attaching this fresh floral foam. Um, now, I do not have tiny cages. Now, some people carry the really, the a third of a block cage. For me, I always felt like I don't use them often, so I always felt like it was wasted money to order extra cages when I don't use them very often. So I'm going to show you how to just use a piece of floral foam, and we're going to tape it in place. I'm going to take my floral knife, and I have two thirds of a block of floral foam that I have soaked. I'm just going to cut this foam right in half. I'm going to set it on the table to cut it. So this is about a third of a block of fresh floral foam. It has been soaked in water. Be sure you always soak it. Okay. Anytime you use fresh, um, Fresh floral foam, soak it first. I'm gonna set that over here for a second. I'm gonna take my tape. Um, my largest arrangement's gonna go down here on the corner, and then I'm gonna do a smaller arrangement up here on the top. I'm gonna take waterproof tape, and I'm just going to come around that, um, that wreath um, so it's attached. Then I'm gonna take my foam here, and I am going to Take the tape, and I am going to tape this in place. Now you may need someone to help you tape that in place because it's not always easy to hold. But I'm just going around that foam and I'm kind of making a little bit of a grid just to make sure that it is going to stay in place. Okay, there we go. And you can see I kind of made a grid. Now, if you don't want to, I'm going to bring it a little closer so you can see what I did. 
I just kind of went all the way around with that tape. So I taped it in place, um, but you can see how it's kind of a grid just so that the foam doesn't fall apart. Now you don't want to use big, big, big flowers in there, um, but it's going to work perfectly as a um, piece of foam. Now I'm going to take my second piece and I'm going to actually just cut it in half. So it's a third of a block. I'm just cutting it in half to for my smaller um, flowers. Again, I am going to start up here in the corner and come around it with just some tape so that my tape is hanging there. It just makes it easier when you're by yourself. I'm going to take my second piece of foam and I am just going to tape that in place. And I'm going to do exactly like I did before and kind of make a little bit of a grid to ensure that my foam will stay in place. Okay, there is my second piece of foam just taped into place, just in the same, same way I taped the bottom one. Okay. So my foam is in place, everything's ready. So you want to make sure your mechanics are very well put together because you don't want it to fall apart. Um, that's the worst thing in the world. You don't want it to fall apart. So make sure it's well taped and it's well well secured to your, um, to your stand. This is um, leather leaf foliage. Now let me say this, if you are using faux flowers, just use faux foam. It's the exact same technique, it's just with a different medium. So it's completely perfect to um, do faux flowers in the same way. Honestly, faux flowers are wonderful on a grapevine because then they can take it home um, and they can keep it. I think it's always nice to have a pretty um, faux wreath. I don't think that there's anything wrong with that at all. I'm taking a piece of leather leaf and I'm just going to break it into smaller pieces and I'm going to tuck it right into that foam. Now what I'm going to do is just make sure my foam is covered and I'm going to take that leather and just break it into tiny little pieces and go all the way through that little foam. Now you can use any types of greens. Um, I like a leather because leather is inexpensive and it cover, it does a really great job of covering my mechanics. I just need to make sure that my foam isn't going to show. So that's why I like to use leather leaf. And it breaks into smaller pieces. It's really a nice greens. Okay, there's the top, very simple. And now we're going to come in and we're going to green out the bottom. Of course, the bottom's going to be a larger arrangement. So I'm going to leave my um, greens a little longer and my stems a little longer. And you can see I'm just taking and just breaking those leaves into smaller pieces. Just breaking them off the original stem. I do have a bucket up underneath um, this wreath. Um, and my water is able to drip right down into that bucket. That's just keeping my floor from getting wet. But if you hear a drip, it's because it's dripping right into my bucket. Now make sure, be real careful, and make sure that you get those edges really good because we just want to make sure that they don't show. All right, so we are greened out with our leather leaf, just very simply greened out. Next, what we're going to do, and leather leaf always kind of leaves a, um, a brown little, little residue on your hands. I usually just wipe it on my pants, so you can always use paper towels or what have you. Next, I'm gonna come in with some lime flower. So the lime flower that I chose um, is this really pretty white lark. 
Lark and Blue Delphinium are actually in the same family. I love Larkspur though because it has these really pretty little tendrils or buds, um, little shoots, and they're it's just pretty. So I'm gonna take um, my Larkspur and I'm going to cut it apart. I don't need it as long as it actually comes. So I'm gonna take and cut it. And you see these sweet little buds? Use those buds in your arrangement. Just take and cut them and tuck those in just as if they were just a filler flower. Now some of the stems don't have the little buds and that's completely okay. So what I'm doing is I'm leaving some length. I have um, it long there and kind of long up here. With lime flower, I like to leave a little bit of length. And I just use those little buds as kind of a little filler flower, just added into my arrangement. And I'm gonna use three stems up there in the top. Okay, so there is our white Delphinium. I'll bring it a little closer so you can see it. See how they're kind of tucked in there? Okay, next we're going to come in with some lavender colored stock. Um, so I have some pretty lavender stock. Now, stock smells so pretty. Um, and so I'm going to take and remove some of the leaves, cut that stem at an angle. Nestle that right down into that floral foam. Okay, so there is our pretty lavender stock. Next, we're going to come in with these beautiful mums. We have these large purple colored mums. So I think I am going to take the largest mum. And I'm going to tuck him right down here at the bottom. Now, anytime you are working with flowers, a lot of times they're different sizes. This one's a little smaller than this one. When you think about size, I want you to think about weight. And I know that sounds so strange because they basically weigh the same. Um, the larger one looks heavier. So it needs to go toward the bottom of the arrangement. The smaller one looks lighter, so it goes to the top. So anytime like you're, if you do a bud vase and you do three stems, the largest one goes at the bottom, the medium size goes in the middle, and the smallest at the top. Always um, stair step them like that. The largest always goes at the bottom. So say we're working with a hydrangea. A hydrangea is a very large bloom, right? It doesn't need to go tall in the vase with flowers around them. It needs to go lower in the vase because it visually looks heavier. So I am going to take this flower, the largest bloom. I'm gonna I cut that stem at an angle and then I'm removing some of those leaves and then I'm pressing it right down into that floral foam. Oh, and he's so pretty in there. I'm gonna take a smaller bloom and I'm just gonna stair step it up just a little. Tuck him a little higher into that arrangement, okay? And then I'm gonna take my third bloom and I'm gonna tuck it right down at the bottom of that floral arrangement up there. So there's our three blooms of mums. Next we have some beautiful yellow yarrow. Look at how pretty that yarrow is. So, so pretty. Again, you want the larger bloom. See how I have three, three different blooms, three different sizes, small, medium, and large. The larger bloom is going to go towards the bottom there. And then I don't know, do we want to tuck? Oh, we'll play with it. Anyway, larger always goes toward the bottom. When you're thinking of designing, visually, larger looks better toward the bottom, okay? Okay, tucked in that yarrow there, and then I'm gonna tuck in one up here. So you can see I'm really pretty much doing the same types of flowers in both arrangements. 
Next, we'll come in with a little blue thistle. Now, the reason I'm using the blue thistle is she loved the color blue, but I, the only color blue I have is blue thistle and blue ribbon. So, I thought that I would use some blue thistle and then we'll tuck our blue ribbon in also. So, it will pull that pretty blue. So, I'm going to use this just um, as a filler flower. I'm going to tuck it in just as a filler. I love blue thistle. I think it's just such a pretty texture and a pretty color. Now, I'm taking my floral knife and I'm cutting a few of those blooms off and just tucking those in. I love anything that kind of has spray blooms on it because you can always cut them off and use them throughout the arrangement and be able to spread that color throughout. Like daisies, little spray daisies, they're always fun. If you have a short, more compact arrangement, you can always cut those daisies off a little shorter. Okay, so there's our thistle. Next, we're gonna come in with a couple of blooms of beautiful oriental lilies. Oriental lilies are my favorite. They're just a larger lily with they have a lot of fragrance so you have to be careful um, for anybody that's really sensitive to fragrance you don't want this lily in their arrangement but it does smell so pretty and it really fills a room with a beautiful aroma so i am going to take this and i'm going to cut each individual bud off so i'm going to cut this flower off this bud and then this opened this cracked bud um, and that way i can use it deep down in the arrangement so i took my floral Knife, and I just cut that bloom right off and I'm going to nestle it, press it right down into that floral foam. Now the reason I am using these blooms last, the reason that I'm adding them last is because they bump really easily and they'll break. Now this one still has the stamens right down in there. You want to pull those out. They open up and they cause the pollen to sprinkle out on the lily. Go ahead and remove them because they will damage the lily, damage your clothes, all the things. So anytime you see them, remove the pollen always. I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna cut these buds off and I'm just gonna tuck them right into my arrangement individually. And the reason I'm doing that is strictly because when they're all on a stem, sometimes that's too much. See how they're all attached to the stem? That's too much as they're um, arranged on that stem. So to me, I find it's easier to go ahead and cut those off, especially if I'm using them deep down into an arrangement. Oh, those lilies are so pretty. Next, we're going to come in. I'm going to cut a bloom off. I'm going to tuck it right up here in the top. Now I want you to look closely. See how the pollen is has sprinkled down a uh, sprinkled down into the lily. So you want to go ahead and pull those stamens off. See how it kind of sprinkled down in there? Now I'm just going to blow it. And often if you don't touch it, it won't, it won't stain the lily. And then I have a couple of buds left, so I'm going to take and cut those off. And I think I'm going to use them down here. To finish this arrangement, they asked for blue ribbon. So we are going to finish our arrangement with this really pretty um, lacy blue ribbon. And I'm going to add some ribbon up here and then I'm going to hang some tails down here. Um, so I'm going to take my ribbon and this is the front. So the front is facing me. I'm going to take and make a loop. So I'm holding that loop between my thumb and my forefinger there. Make a twist, a loop, a twist, a loop. Okay. That should probably be 
plenty. Take my scissors. And I don't really need my streamers this long, so let me show you how I'm not going to waste. So I took and cut that streamer there. I'm just going to lay that right back there. Lay it right on the back and tie it into your bow. I'm going to take some florist wire, put it underneath that thumb, take that wire and twist it. All right, there's that bow. So very simply tied there. I'm gonna make a little bit larger bow and we're gonna nestle it down here at the bottom. And when I say a little bit larger, not so much larger in diameter, just more loops. Okay, and then I'm leaving my tails a little bit longer than I did on the top side. And you can always rearrange. Now, if you don't want ribbon on your arrangement, guys, you do not have to add ribbon. It's really completely up to you. Now, they asked for ribbon, so that's why we made, we put it on here specifically. Um, but it's really all in your preference. Guys, thank you so much for being here. If you have any questions about how we do things here at Flowers by the Bunch, you can always ask. We are so happy to answer your questions. Um, do me a great big favor. If you enjoyed this video and you felt like it taught you something, give us a thumbs up. It helps us to be seen. Be sure to hit that subscribe button right down below. And if you'll hit that bell, it'll give you notifications for when we have a brand new video. Thanks guys.